Ah, hello. I'm Neil Cowie. Hi, I'm Mirasa Alizadeh. Today we will talk about the first stage of a joint project into working with university students and exploring virtual reality. As you can see from the map, we are based in Japan. I work for Osaka University in Japan's second biggest city on the right of the map. Neil and his five students in the project are based at Okayama University, which is about 170 kilometers to the west. Virtually, all meetings were conducted online. Our presentation details a small-scale participatory project in a Japanese university in which five students weekly reviewed various VR applications of their own choice, shared their views about the learning affordances of these materials in a collaborative VR space, and planned ways to create their own VR materials. In higher education, the use of VR seems to be focused on science and engineering, and to some degree medicine. In comparison, there is relatively little use of VR in the humanities or language learning, and in addition, most of these research studies tend to be experimental rather than based on student experience. Drawing on these conclusions from the literature, we decided to co-explore in what direction our students could take their VR experience. Four of the students worked for Okayama University as student assistants in the Center for Teaching Excellence, which is how they were recruited. We did not want to teach the students about how to use VR, but instead wanted the students to experiment for themselves by finding their own VR applications and seeing to what extent they were useful for learning. It was hoped that the students would work in a self-directed and autonomous manner and would share with the whole group what they could find within a VR environment. These are our three research questions. Number one, what do university students think about their VR experience? Two, what kind of VR applications can students find on their own? And three, what kind of learning affordances can working in a VR context encourage? From now on, Neil will talk about the rest of our study. Over to you, Neil. Thanks, Marasa. Uh, the two of us and the five students were provided with Oculus Quest 2 headsets, which had the Engage virtual communications platform preloaded. At weekly intervals from April until June 2021, uh, we met online in the Engage space. After an initial training period to understand how the headsets and Engaged worked, the five students were asked to investigate any free VR apps that they could find. They were encouraged to look for applications that focused in some way on their academic major, which was uh, economics, engineering, sociology and politics, or if they had a personal interest in a subject, uh, music, for example. They wrote about the applications in an online survey and they also presented them orally in the engaged space. As well as explaining about the VR apps, the participants also suggested ideas for how they thought they could be used for educational purposes. In this way, we gradually built up a list of potential VR applications that had been recommended by the students. Almost all our meetings were held online uh, because of COVID, uh, but the initial training of the students in how to use the headsets was held face to face uh, in a classroom. The students worked in pairs to go through the inbuilt Oculus training system. And this uh, screenshot shows uh, what they were doing. The data from our study comes from several sources, uh, the student online uh, VR reviews or surveys, uh, participant observation of the meetings that we had online, and focus group interviews with the students. The data was analysed using the principles of exploratory practice, uh, in which data from lessons is used to understand classroom life and to bring students and teachers together in mutual collaboration. 
What this meant in practice is that the data gathered in one week would be used to form the basis of the tasks and activities in the following week. This data and the commentary on it was written up every week to eventually become the basis for this practice paper and presentation. Here are some screenshots from the Engage application. Uh, we actually started with a traditional setting in a kind of lecture hall. Uh, the one on the left shows Marassa's avatar uh, giving a, a presentation in the hall. Um, and we also moved to other venues, um, non-traditional ones perhaps, such as a cafe uh, and a moon base. We have divided our results to match the three research questions. Uh, here is research question one. Uh, what do university students think about their virtual reality experience? Uh, the students were overall very positive about their VR lessons, uh, describing the experience as fun, uh, exciting and stimulating. Uh, they also felt that the experiences were very engaging, uh, especially the more physical game activities that they tried. But they felt less feelings of presence uh, in environments where they, where they moved less or they were in a sort of simulated real environment, such as the lecture hall I've, I've just shown you previously. On the other hand, wearing a headset meant the students could uh, not be distracted by other actions, such as checking the phone. So they felt they were more on task. On the negative side, all, all participants suffered to some degree from cyber sickness, as they sometimes felt dizzy and nauseous or had a headache after using the applications. Uh, one further problem was the difficulty of wearing glasses with the headset and the weight of the device becoming uncomfortable after prolonged use. On a slightly separate note, uh, the students felt that the use of avatars uh, had the potential to improve their communication skills as it decreased their anxiety. A research question too asked what kind of uh, applications the students could find, um, which is not an easy task to be honest, as there are not so many free uh, virtual reality applications. Uh, they did find 18 overall, uh, ranging from various kinds of games, um, N equals 7, um, to immersive documentaries, uh, they found five of those, uh, more subject specific ones, four of those, and two more social applications. And the screenshots uh, show examples uh, from each type of application. The third uh, question was to look at what kind of uh, learning affordances uh, did the students find working in a VR context? Um, we asked them to reflect on what they thought they could be used for. And here are some quotations that illustrate some of their ideas. So student C thought that VR apps could be used for developing empathy by being immersed in another's context. Uh, D said that working together in a VR environment could increase the chances for team bonding and collaboration. And student S uh, thought that VR apps could be very good for teaching content knowledge, even though it was quite difficult to actually find uh, apps that focus specifically on content. There are a number of discussion points and implications arising from the initial re results of this project, and we've divided them into positive and, and negative. Firstly, on the positive side, um, the students independently found a number of free virtual reality apps that they felt could be used by teachers for other students. Of course, uh, teachers still need to check for themselves the suitability of these applications, but the student reviews are a great resource to find potentially useful materials without a teacher having to exhaustively search for them. Secondly, the students responded very positively to the opportunities for exploratory and, and self-directed learning. Thirdly, um, virtual reality provided many opportunities for collaboration, for mentoring and, and for creativity with the students both informally and formally teaching each other about applications and techniques for using virtual reality. The medium seems to encourage this kind of interactivity, which is important for higher order thinking and communication. On the negative side, uh, one student cautioned that as a novel experience, Students will welcome virtual reality, but once the novelty wears off, it's important to select appropriate activities 
and monitor the time spent doing them in order to avoid physical discomfort and uh, virtual reality sickness, cyber sickness. Although uh, VR can encourage self-directed learning, it's important from a health perspective that teachers closely monitor students' activities and, if necessary, limit their exposure to the environment. Uh, finally, on the, on the negative side, there were a number of technical barriers that emerged, including difficulties signing in to applications, um, as you can imagine, perhaps interruptions to Wi-Fi connectivity, and the lack of comfort of the headsets after a, uh, some time using them. In the next stage of our project, uh, in response to the issue of cyber sickness, uh, we have moved to working in a web-based browser uh, using Mozilla Hubs uh, as our meeting space. The students have now been asked to teach each other about their academic subjects, and so far we've had presentations from them uh, on literature, uh, art, uh, maths, uh, music, and social network marketing. Our next stage is that we've asked the students to make uh, 360 degree photos and videos over the summer break and we'll be seeing how these turn out in the new semester which begins uh, around now in October. So just to summarise our talk today, um, we originally began feeling that there was limited research into the use of VR for language education and especially for students selected VR materials. Uh, we started a, a small-scale pilot project in a Japanese university in which students uh, every week reviewed various VR applications of their own choice, which they then shared uh, and taught each other about the learning affordances of these materials. Results show that the students found working collaboratively in the VR space was engaging and motivating and as well as beneficial for their language development and communication skills. The project highlighted a number of technical barriers to using VR successfully and perhaps the biggest problem was that of cyber sickness. I'd just like to point out that the uh, slides today were from a template produced by Slides Carnival and I'd like to thank them very much. Uh, finally, uh, on behalf of Marasa and myself, I'd just like to say thank you for watching and uh, if you are uh, attending the MLearn conference, uh, please ask us any questions after this slideshow finishes. Or if you're watching on uh, YouTube, uh, here are our email addresses and you can write to us and uh, we'd be very glad to hear your comments and questions. Uh, thanks once again. Thank you.